Okay, here's the latest update on the 188-day mega quake cycle. Have lots and lots of new information that I think is very important. First of all, we saw the big quake in Acapulco today that they initially said was 7.9 and then 7.6. Now they're saying 7.4, 7.6, somewhere in that range. Still a very large quake. And that earthquake happened today at about, I think you said it was about 5 something of Pacific time. Okay, let me give you the latest updates that I have on uh, earthquakes in California. I think this is very, very, very telling. Now, first of all, that quake in Mexico, was that the, the big quake in the 188-day cycle uh, two days early or one or two days early? Or was it just a precursor to what's really headed our way in a day or two? That's the question. I still believe we've got something huge coming up. Only God knows for sure. Let me break down the information for you so I can... We can set it, set it straight and let you know. I've been researching this heavily today. Okay. In the last 24 hours, there have been 14 major earthquakes in California. Okay. Now, when I say major, it's 2.5, between 2.5 and 6. That's still considered to be a major quake. There's been 14 major quakes in California over the last 24 hours. And the average, let's go back just a little bit in California and see. There were also eight major earthquakes in the last 24 hours in Alaska. I'm watching California and Alaska real close right now. So let's just look and see what kind of averages we have. Okay. Before I go there, let me go here as well. There have been 102 total earthquakes in California in the last 24 hours. That's humongous. They average about 100 to 150 a week. There's been 102 in the last 24 hours in California and 40 in Alaska. Okay, so for California averages... The week prior to this, there was, there were, um, let me see, five large, five large earthquakes in California over one day, and the next day there were five more. So there were ten over a two-day period in the last week prior to today, and the last several days prior to today. But today alone, there's been 14, okay, just today. In the last 24 hours, there were 10 over a two-day period, two-day plus period, just several days ago. Okay, so to give you an example of, of how they normally run, prior to that, there were two in the whole seven-day week before that. There were four in the three weeks prior to that, and only six in the month prior to that. So you can see six in a month and 14 in one day, huge, huge, huge uptick, and 102 total earthquakes today only in California. And here, I'll, I'll break it down even further. This is what's really interesting. First of all, these aren't, these aren't aftershocks of the Mexico earthquake because the bulk of these quakes have been in Cobb, California, which is Northern California. There have been 46 earthquakes today in Cobb, California. 46 earthquakes today in Cobb, California. They're not aftershocks. They were two hours, two hours... Uh, prior to the other, other earthquake, they were beginning to cluster there. They couldn't be aftershocks, and they're too far away <coughs> up the coast to be aftershocks either, and they weren't, they weren't prequels. These are clusters. And so out of the 102 earthquakes in California today, 46 have been in Cobb, California, in northern Mexico. Wow. So if you talk to the people who are the experts, the people who are the volcano experts, which I've been studying and looking into and checking in with, and the ones who are the astrological experts who look at the planet alignments and everything else, they have said that prior to any large quake going back through all of the last four cycles of the 188-day mega cycle starting two years ago that have hit Christchurch, New Zealand, Christchurch, they've hit in um, Concepcion, Chile, again, the conception, the birth, these could be very easily be church related. Then we had the huge mega quake in Japan and tsunami. And then we had the one in Vanuatu 188 days before. And now 186 days after that, we have this large 7.4, 7.6, whatever they're going to call it. They called it a 7.9 at one time in Acapulco, Mexico, which is on the west coast, just south of California, south of the Baja area. So... You talk to the experts, and they say that one to two days prior to a huge mega quake, you're going to see clusters. You're going to see large clusters of earthquakes, small ones, gather together in one spot. 
like I said, there's been 46 today in Cobb, California. Now, am I saying that there's going to be a big mega quake in Cobb, California tomorrow or Thursday? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that God has brought these huge earthquakes over the past two years, four cycles in a row. Is it possible that the one today in Acapulco was the, the next one two days early? It is possible. It could be that. But again, after that earthquake was, was long gone, two hours afterwards, you've got a cluster of 46 earthquakes in Cobb, California, and 102 in the state so far. And the night's young. It goes, the night goes long. We've still got another six hours or so to tally up quakes. So who knows what the numbers are going to be in six hours from now. All I can tell you is what they are right now. But you're seeing the clusters. They say will happen if there is a big quake. And these experts are also saying that if the quake is in Alaska, that they think it's going to be a 10 plus. Okay. If it's going to be on the west coast of California, Washington State, Oregon, that it's going to be anywhere from from the low to mid nines, even up to 10 there as well. Okay. If you get a quake of 10 on the west coast of this country of Sinerica, you've got serious, serious problems. If it's, and it's offshore, you got a tsunami too, I don't even want to imagine. But you know, this country has dug its grave, has dug its grave, and God's burying us in it right now. His hand of protection is gone, okay? His hand of judgment is on us. It's here, and it's here to stay. The Holy Spirit told me, you know, late November of 2010, when I was praying, interceding for this wicked country, he stopped me and said, listen, and tell everybody what I'm about to tell you. And he told me, I've shared before, I like to update, this is very important because it ties in so much. He told me he's sick of our country, of the homosexuality. He's sick of the abortions. 52 million babies murdered by that time, about 55 million now. He's sick of, of all of the anti-Jewish and the anti-Semitism and the replacement theology. He's sick of us being the porno capital of the world. He's sick of us being one of the child molesting and, and, uh, and child abuse capitals of the world. He's sick and tired of God being removed from the church and replaced with Satan. He's tired of our leaders just running this country into the ground and being run by the devil. He's had enough. So the Holy Spirit told me that God's hand of protection was about to be removed and his hand of judgment about to start hammering down on us. And lo and behold, just a few weeks after that, on 1-1-11, when the black birds started falling down in B.B. Arkansas, it all started, my friends. You can look at this country since 1-1-11 and see how our fiber, our, the fiber of this nation has been ripping apart to shreds. God's brought every kind of calamity down on us you can imagine so far. Severe tornadoes, severe hurricanes, severe droughts, severe famine, severe plagues, severe pestilence, monetary problems, problems with the government being run right, problems with people can't find jobs, they can't, have, they can't find enough food to eat, starvation, they can't keep staying in their homes, they're, they're all being foreclosed on. You're having diseases that have been eradicated for hundreds of years that are back now. You're having everything possible bad can happen, can happen. And God's tired of it. He's sick and tired of it. He's tired of us and we're being judged. Now, what we've seen right now is nothing compared to what's coming because the Holy Spirit also told me that before God was finished, this whole country would be on their knees begging him to stop. If there's a huge quake out in the West Coast, that could be a huge start to it. Bottom line is this, my friends. With all the terrible things happening now and with people dying by this everywhere across this country and across this world, you have to have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior now. You have to be saved by the blood of Jesus. If you have been saved in the past, but you're backslidden, you've got all kinds of sin in your life and all kinds of iniquity, which is a sin pattern, you refuse to repent because you believe the lies of once saved, always saved. The, the lies that say Jesus Christ died for all of our sins, past, present, and future, so we can do whatever we want to do after we're saved, and it's fine. And then some will say, well, you weren't really saved if you're living in sin, but see, God says, Jesus Christ says in the Holy Bible, that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. So if you ask, you're saved. So you call Jesus Christ a liar when you say some weren't really saved to start with. Get your Bible concordance out and Google and get all of these scriptures. If you don't want to dig for it might take months. You don't have months right now. Go to a website with a man named Dan Corner, D-A-N-C-O-R-N-E-R-O-S-A-S, or Once Saved, Always Saved. I don't endorse anything else that he has except this one website. But all those scriptures, the hundreds of scriptures you can find in the Bible, he's got on one website. And you read those. Get your King James Bible and read and compare. He uses NIV a lot, which I don't like. But it's still, the same, it's still the scripture, but read it in your King James Version to get the, the whole scoop. If you can read all that and still believe that once saved, always saves the truth, then Satan's already got you. He's dragging you down to hell right now. And you're calling God a liar and the Holy Bible a book of lies. And whoa, whoa, whoa unto you, my friends. Can't do that. So we've got to be make sure that we're saved. You know, witness to your family, friends, neighbors, 
everybody, whoever you, strangers, get online like I'm doing. Get on Facebook, Twitter, Google. Get on YouTube, put a video out. Witness to people. Time is short. And even if a mega quake does not hit, even if the quake today in Acapulco was the next big one that came a couple days early, and there isn't a big one, like I said, there's still all these terrible things that are happening everywhere. People are dying like crazy. People are murdering everyone. Murder suicides have been going crazy over this country this, this last year. Satan's taking over. And God, the Holy Spirit says all the time, when God is not wanted anymore and people remove God from the society, Satan takes over. God steps back and says, hey, it's your choice. I'm going to leave you to Satan now. He pulls away his hand of protection. That's what's happened here. The spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of Satan is all over this country. You can die any second. And when you die, when that silver cord, which is your life, breaks instantly, wherever you are with Jesus Christ, at that moment, that's where you're going to spend eternity. If you're not right with Jesus Christ, if you haven't been saved, you're going to hell. If you have been saved, but you've got a, a bunch of sin in your life, you haven't confessed because you don't believe in that, you're going to hell. You have to get right with Jesus Christ now. There's no time to play games anymore, my friends. Game time is over. Jesus Christ is going to return any second of any day. I know Harold Camping ruined it for so many people. I know he, he just lied and made the Bible out to be, to be lying to people because he said the Bible guaranteed it. Don't believe that. Okay? If you have a crazy person in your family, your whole family is not, is not crazy. That one person is. They don't judge your whole family because of one crazy person. Don't judge the whole church because of somebody like Harold Camping. Okay? Jesus Christ is coming back any second of any day. Only God knows the day and the hour. Okay? Anyone else who tells you he knows the day and hour God's returning, run away from them. They're a liar. But God's promised us, people like me and others who are watching, looking in the skies, watching earthquakes, watching all the things I described before to you, he promised he would give us discernment to let us know the season of Christ's return. We're in the season. I think we're in the last days of the season. God's given me dreams, vision. He's given me word from the Holy Spirit. He gave me a sign in the sky a few weeks ago. I've got a videos on all this stuff. Watch them. It's good information. But he's told me, time's up. So we're waiting on God right now on God's time. It could be minutes, hours, days, weeks, months. It could be a year. I don't think it'll be that long. But it's not. It's going to be instantly, though. Any second, any day. That's how fast it is. Twinkling the eye. If you're not ready, there's no time for a timeout, for a do-over, for hang on, Jesus, I was getting ready to repent now. No. You're stuck here for seven years of hell on earth with the Antichrist, where, where the devil is, is loose. The Holy Spirit is gone with a tiny remnant of him because he's always around somewhere. He's on the presence. He always, always has a little bit. But it's going to be Satan just pounding this earth, pounding this earth, and just starving you, taking away your water, torturing you, throwing you in jail, cutting your head off because you refuse to take the mark of the beast. If you take the mark of the beast, you'll spend forever in hell. You can't do that. Pick up your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, buy one. They're so cheap. You can buy a dollar store for a dollar. Get a New Testament. Open it to the last book of Revelation and start reading and start studying. Google questions you have. Go to Concordance. Send me messages if you have questions. I'll be glad to answer your questions on anything in the Bible. We don't have much time, my friends. And again, regardless of what's going to happen, we have to be ready at all times because what's been going on now is nothing compared to what's coming. We're going to keep getting hammered and hammered and hammered and hammered more and more by the hand of God. Like I said, we've dug our own grave. Now he's burying us in it. I'll keep a close eye, my friends, the next day or two on this whole earthquake thing and see what's going on in Cobb, California, see what's going on in Alaska, all over California, everywhere in the world. I'm looking at the whole world, but right, right now, the big cluster of quakes, like I said, is in California with almost half of the 102 in Cobb, California, and Alaska's getting hit pretty hard, too. Washington State's even having a few. You just don't have any time, my friends, for any of this. They're having a few on the border of, the border of California and Nevada. So much bad stuff there. San Andreas Fault, all the different fault lines. We need to make sure we're right with the Lord because regardless of what God's going to do or He's not going to do in this instance, in the next day or two, we have to be ready. We know a big one happened today. Could that be the big one? Or could it just be just a taste? The mid-sevens of a big ten that's coming in a day or two. We have to be ready. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would just wake people up, help people understand that we don't have much time We've brought this on ourselves by our wicked living, by our filthy lifestyles. Not everybody is that way, but the majority of our country is just sinful, filthy, and wicked. And we've brought it on ourselves. It's our own fault. We have no one to blame but us. I just pray that you would just hound people, Jesus. Just rebuke, correct, teach, convict. Don't give anyone any peace, happiness, joy, comfort, satisfaction. Nothing good in our lives until, until we just follow you. And if we're backslidden, to fall on our knees and repent and come back to you. If we've never been saved, to fall on our knees and ask you to be our Lord and Savior. Time's almost up, Jesus. In regards to what happens in the next day or two, or what's happened today, it's coming. You're sending it to us all the time, God. We have to be ready at all times. 
Please just help us to be ready and to watch and take things seriously and reach out to those that are lost that we know and that we don't know because time is short. In Jesus' name I ask it, amen. If you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day and I believe you went back to heaven to the right-hand side of God the Father. And since that time, you've been making a place in heaven for all Christians forever. Please forgive me of my sins, Jesus. Please come and live in my heart. Wash my heart clean, white as snow. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it, amen. Jesus says in the Bible that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. If you'd like me to pray with you to be saved, send me an inbox or private message. You can message me anytime if you have questions about God, questions about Jesus, about the Bible, questions about being saved. I'm here for you, okay? I have a lot of ministries, so I'm busy, but I always check back throughout the day everywhere, so I will get back to you, I promise you. If you have a friend, neighbor, loved one, coworker, anyone who does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you're sick, you have a sick family member, friend, neighbor, coworker, loved one, if you have a sick pet, if you need a job, car, home, food, clothes, water, whatever you need, if you'd like someone to pray with you that has faith, send me an inbox, a private message. I would love to pray for you. I prayed and God gave me the gift of faith. Nothing I did, he just gave it to me. Praise the Lord. I have mustard seed faith now. The Bible says it can move mountains. And I get hundreds of prayer requests all the time. And God performs miracles for my friends and the strangers that just write into me. God is awesome. He's amazing. He performs miracles local that I've seen over and over and over again. Nothing because of me. I have the faith and the belief and I pray. But the Holy Spirit does the word and all glory goes to God. I take no credit or glory for nothing. It's all him. But let's share this video. Let's share the link to this video channel. And the whole video, any video with friends, neighbors, coworkers, loved ones, with strangers. Drop it in a blog somewhere. Drop it in a link somewhere. Plant the seed and walk away and let God water it so it can grow. We need to get the word out the way the Bible was written. Because most preachers won't preach it anymore. They're spineless. They have no backbone. They're like a jellyfish. They're an invertebrate. But I'm going to preach the Bible the way it's written because the Holy Spirit told me to do it. And that's what I'm going to do. When you hear on here, anything that has Bible in it, anything that has anything in the Bible, is from the King James Bible. And I guarantee you'll find it in there. I don't preach anything else. But we've got to get the word out. These people can be saved. They can be repentant of being backslidden. They can be sanctified. They can be motivated to get off the sidelines and help reap the harvest. Miracles can happen in their lives. But I'll pray for anyone that wants me to pray for you. And I'll pray believing in my heart. I'll speak with my mouth. And I know that God will answer all my prayers if I pray in his holy will. He'll do the same for each of you, my friends, if you test him. And if you're his child, his word never returns empty. I love you guys. I pray for you every day. May God bless you. Get the word out. Witness to everyone you can right now. And I will keep you informed of anything that I find out. From experts. I don't take any hearsay. If I don't see it with my own eyes or get it from someone who knows, I don't take secondhand information. I don't take stuff that I find on the internet just on somewhere. I got to know that it's reputable or I'm not going to tell you about it. Thanks.